Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Provost Nolan Atkins, and I warmly welcome you, the graduates, parents, family, friends, and NVU faculty, staff, and students to the robing ceremony for the graduating class of 2022. The, you, you, you go ahead and clap. This traditional event marks the beginning of our commencement celebratory activities and is the first official recognition of our seniors as soon to be graduates. I offer special thanks to Autumn Chamberlain, class of 2022, for playing the piano for this ceremony. Please join me in a round of applause for Autumn. I would also like to take a moment to recognize the visual arts students who designed the robing program. The cover was designed by Terrence Strait, and the interior was designed by Rory Conray, both members of the class of 2022. Thank you, TJ and Rory, for lending your artistic talents to this ceremony. Now I would like to introduce the members of our platform party, starting on my right, Interim President John Mills, Jillian McDonald, Class of 2022, and the dynamic duo, Associate Professor William, Mor William Morrison, Business Administration, and Associate Professor James Noyes, Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism. I now am pleased to invite Interim President John Mills to the podium to offer his greeting to the class of 2022. Congratulations to the class of 2022. You'll hear that over and over again today. And I have been told that this is the very first class that is truly Northern Vermont University in its entirety. So you can call yourselves the founding class of Northern Vermont University. There is a, yeah, go ahead, clap if you want. There is a lot to celebrate today with awards for achievement and the simple yet significant task of robing. And the robing connects you to a tradition that goes back something to the 12th century, signifying special achievement in the arena of academic work. And the mortarboard is also meant to signify a connection with achievement. These are not trivial garments. The shape, some think, it was started to represent a book, what all early scholars had as their study space. But others also feel, by its name, mortarboard, it represents work of a master craftsman, either way, showing achievement. In any case, the point is special. Special to you for your achievements and special for us to see by donning this regalia that you have worked with us to achieve academic scholarly success. My wish as you now commence to the next stage of your life is you have developed a thirst for knowledge that will be never ending. I can guarantee that in this present day and age, that thirst to continue learning and improving your skills is absolutely necessary for success as you go forward. So take this time here at NVU to be the commencement, not the end of your higher learning. Use the skills you obtained in your professional major the skills you learned in your campus life 
and community service endeavors and the skills you developed as a team player to start your careers, but also use those skills to apply to the new learning and the citizenship efforts as you grow as a contributing member of our society, and it will make NVU proud. Again, congratulations, and don't stop now. Be all you can be using what the faculty, staff, and your own efforts have built for you. So again, congratulations. I now invite Annabelle Hipp, class of 2022, to the podium to introduce the faculty speakers. Thank you, President Mills, for inviting me to the podium. Hello, class of 2022. My name is Annabelle Hipp, and I am a graduating senior here from the Linden campus. Um, getting a bachelor's degree in outdoor education, leadership and tourism, and getting two minors in visual communications and business. Today I'm here to introduce Bill Morrison and James Noyce. A little background on these two professors, as said earlier, they are associate professors here. They are role models to many here today and who have graduated before us. And <laughs> they are also a part of my personal support team. Um, Bill has been at NVU and Linden for about 10 years now and has been my advisor throughout my two years of my business minor and has helped me a lot with my personal anxiety facing personal finances. I'll be honest, I was a little sad to learn that he was going to be retiring but I can honestly say that I am entirely honored to have been able to learn from him before his end here at Linden. James has been my OELT professor for my entire four years here, and he has told many stories and has shared many experiences through his time in the mountain resort management and business careers. Again, I will be honest, it was kind of sad to learn that he would be moving onward from, uh, from the Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism Department into the Business Department. But again, we had him first. <laughs> um, and it will definitely make me feel special later down the road. Saying all of that, I definitely can say that these two professors are very outgoing and have wonderful souls, and I am honored to have had them teach me and all of you. So here I am, I am introducing them, Bill Morrison and James Noyce. James, we have breaking news regarding the class of 2022. The CDC has reported a highly contagious outbreak of senioritis on the Linden campus. <laughs> Symptoms include the inability to focus on schoolwork and wishing the next nine days would fly by. Well, Bill, speaking of flying by, we learned that OELT graduates have recently converted their caps and gowns into flying wingsuits. James, do we have any actual graduation news from OELT? Well, we do, Bill. Turns out there's a lot happening in the classroom and in the field. Owen Kelly interned at Yellowstone as a rec coordinator. That turned, there you go. That internship has turned into a park ranger job for the Army Corps of Engineers. And Audrey Levine landed her dream job, quite literally, at China Hot Springs in Alaska, learning about taking care of sled dogs. 
I might note that's after 53 applications, so maybe she should consider a career in HR. <laughs> and Paige Daly. Is Paige here, I hope? Oh, there's Paige. Oh, Paige has taken the long road, literally and figuratively. She worked on a class project analyzing business technology needs for, tech, uh, for Kingdom Trails. This opened the door for Paige to engage in a co-op, which has now turned into a full-time job. I did note, though, that Kingdom Trails allowed you to learn about using QuickBooks to manage their payables. That can't be right. All right. Bill, what graduation news do we have from business? The senior practicum course this spring featured three teams of seniors working with local companies and organizations. So we have more learning and working. Shane Johnston, Danny Mozzicato, James Baker, and TJ Santa worked with Track Incorporated. This is a company up in Newport. Uh, worked with them this spring to find grant funding for their EV track vehicle startup efforts. Macy Powers, Jesse Monroe, and Alexia Ostrout, who graduates in December, helped the St. Jay Chamber uh, of Commerce figure out how to spend their marketing dollars by using visitor zip code heat maps based on their, uh, that, that these students created. Oliver Cole, who's going on a cruise, no, oh, wait, he's working on a cruise after graduation, <laughs> Um, along with Caleb Lanou and Brandon Jankowski, uh, they worked with Kingdom Trails also on a member survey this spring, and they just gave a great presentation uh, yesterday to that client. In other news, the business and science graduates have teamed up on research funded by the Arbor Day Foundation and the Federal Reserve Bank to determine if money can actually grow on trees. Well, that would be helpful right now. It, it certainly would be. James, do we have any actual graduation science news? We sure do. Will Miller-Brown conducted a research project in coordination with Kingdom Trails to assess the impact of mountain biking on small mammal activity. Wow, Kingdom Trails is pretty popular. We should go check that out. Yeah. What's the news from criminal justice? I'm happy to report that Rebecca Person has engaged in an exceptionally innovative internship with the Community and Restorative Justice Center in St. Johnsbury in collaboration with the Caledonia County District Attorney's Office. This was focused on youthful offenders, and we're told that this is work that she is truly passionate about, and she's gonna pursue this after graduation. <laughs> James, unlike this presentation, is there any real graduation news from the EJA department? Well, funny you should ask, there is. Nick Fish is headed off to Philadelphia to work for XYVID, a company that does live production for Fortune 500 companies all over the world. In the world of music, our very own Autumn Chamberlain launched her EP titled My Turn on May 6th. She's right there on Spotify or wherever else you get your music, so check that out. James, what's going on in visual arts? Uh, Emily, uh, Emily Clancy, Samir Kadrick, Caitlin Gross created a cover art for the Kingdom All-Stars. This art will also be seen on Spotify and Apple Music. And Caitlin Gross, Rory Conroy, and Samir Kadrick, Brandon Barone, and Terrence Strait are graduating as Adobe Certified Professionals in graphic design and illustration using Adobe Illustrator. Don't worry, there's one more. Terrence Strait, Kamir, uh, Samir Kadrick, Latina Weber, and Rory Conroy are also graduating as Adobe Certified Professionals in Print and Digital Media Publication using Adobe InDesign. <laughs> All right, Bill, what's the news from the third floor of ASAC? Well, the ATM graduates have been working on creating perfect weather for graduation. They've, <laughs> they've been seeding clouds with a combination of borax and glitter. <laughs> <laughs> so far they've managed to create one gigantic and very shiny rainbow. <laughs> do we have any graduation news from ATM? Oh, we sure do. Bobby Saba. <laughs> has been chosen in a landslide to be our student commencement speaker. 
He has also done outstanding work in his major and is second to none in his work for the admissions department. In psychology news, we learned that Bri Haywood created a sexual assault display that was described as remarkable. James, what have, uh, what have some of our other graduates been up to around campus? Well, Caitlin Gillette has been a rock star in student life where she has flawlessly assembled weekly student event calendars. <laughs> and Alexander Terrio has been doing tremendous work in the mailroom, and he's just one of the nicest people. That's one of the things that we do here, I think, is we graduate nice people. And Tracy Sherbrooke reports that Rory Conroy has been wonderful to work with on the commencement and robing brochures. She's, uh, she's good-natured, professional, and a joy to work with, very driven and organized. And speaking of Tracy Sherbrooke, none of these events would ever happen without her hard work and pleasant persistence. Let's hear it for Tracy. Well, James, I think we've come to the end of our program. Uh, this graduating class is amazing. They've overcome so much to get to this point. And I know I speak for everyone at, M at NVU when I say that we could not be prouder of each and every one of them. The class of 2022 is truly amazing. With these folks going out into the world, the future is so bright. We're all going to need sunglasses. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Congratulations, graduates. They're not even coming back. <laughs> Regardless, thank you, Bill and James, for your thoughtful and entertaining speech and truly wonderful survey of the accomplishments of our graduates. Let's give them another, another round of applause. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to introduce the student speaker. Jillian McDonald is receiving a bachelor's degree in applied psych and human services as well as an associate's degree in special education. Jillian has been very involved in the campus community, serving as president of the SGA for the past two years, and she has been a peer leader for the past three years. I am pleased to invite Jillian McDonald to the podium as the student robing speaker. Thank you, Dr. Atkins. <clears throat> I'm sure this doesn't come to a surprise to all of you, but a little over four years ago, I was sitting on my couch in Cranston, Rhode Island, trying to decide what university to attend. I somehow found myself Googling pretty colleges in New England. To my lucky result, Linden State was one of those. As I left my campus tour here a little bit over a month later, I turned to my mom and said, I'm coming here. This campus gave me a feeling of home in a matter of minutes, and that feeling has remained growing stronger throughout my time here. Linden is so much more than just a college. It provides a sense of belonging, a family, and a home to a large majority of our student body. I will forever be grateful for my four years here, and I will always consider this place a home. These past four years have been far from easy, entering NVU during its first year being NVU, a pandemic, Jeb Spaulding, online school, and now leaving NVU as it becomes VSU. Look around and you can see some of the people who have helped you during your time here at Linden. I'm here to remind you today of your strength, dedication, and perseverance to your education, Linden, and our surrounding community. As always, I have a few shout outs and appreciation to share with the crowd of those who have impacted my time here. JD, thank you for being there during the late nights, long hours, always standing by SGA and keeping the students' best interests at heart. Lori. Thank you for encouraging me to switch my major. You helped me find exactly where I belong. Pat, thank you for always checking in and pushing me to do my best both inside and outside the classroom. SGA, you have taught me so much and I cannot believe I'm announcing this, but I will miss you. <laughs> to all the family and friends, especially my own, thank you for your daily support. 
We often forget to say thank you, but we wouldn't be here without you. Fellow graduates, congratulations. I wish each and every one of you pure happiness and success, and I hope to run into you again. Best of luck in your future endeavors, and be you, class of 2022. Oh, yeah. I want the applause sign. <laughs> Thank you, Jillian, for your thoughtful words and for all you've done for the school. And mom, you're out there watching. You noticed I said Jillian, not Jilly or Gilly. Uh, it's Jillian. So you should be proud of her today and we're proud of all of her accomplishments. I now invite all graduating students to please rise and put on your cap and gowns. Now wait a minute, see, it says we'll do this. We're almost there. I think I can see, I, almost. All right, we'll continue. May these robes be a reminder of the successes you have had, of the successes to come, and your days at NVU Linden of the faculty and staff who helped you along the way, as well as the friends you made here and the friends you will keep forever. You are always welcome home to your alma mater. Remember that. And now, everyone, please. <laughs> and now, graduates, it's your turn. Please turn to those who have supported you, family, friends, and faculty, and staff, and... All right, you may be seated. We now move into the award presentations for the class of 2022. The first one, I invite Provost Atkins to the podium to help me present the Arthur B. Elliott Honor Society Awards. Each year, the graduating class and the faculty elect a distinguished group of bachelor degree candidates to receive recognition as members of the Arthur B. Elliott Honor Society. This society was established in the name of former President Arthur B. Elliott to honor students who demonstrate strong leadership, scholarship, and excellent service to the campus and community. Would these members of the class of 2022 please come forward one at a time as I call your name to you receive your certificate from Dr. Atkins. 
The first on the list, we will do it alphabetically. Elizabeth Amancio. She may not be here. Autumn Chamberlain. Ben Cheever. Rory Conroy. Leah Camp Crompton. Maison de Jesus. We got a competition right now. Well, so. Gracie Ducker. Zach Falkenberg. <laughs> Haley Fischetti. <laughs> Marin Fowler. <laughs> Caitlin Gillette. <laughs> Annabelle Hip. <laughs> Robert Koenig was unable to attend, but give him a round of applause anyway. <laughs> and to my rear, Jillian McDonald. Raquel Mudeja, sorry, sorry. I'll give you more time because I didn't do a good job with the name, okay? William Miller Brown. Ariana Moran. Jesse Monroe. Felicity Norco. Luke Perrette. Rebecca Pearson. Faith Poirier. Bobby Saba. Vanessa Simonek. Alex Terrio. Cooper Whitehouse is unable to attend. Give him a shot. And Patrick Wickstrom. Please join me in another round of... I now invite Professor Jay... Oh, I'm sorry. Shane Johnston. Is that the only one? I apologize, Shane. I now invite Professor Jay Schaefer of the Atmospheric Sciences Department to the podium to present the next set of awards.
I will be presenting five awards in the Atmospheric Sciences and Climate Change Science program. The first award is given to the graduating senior in Atmospheric Sciences with the highest overall grade point average in the Atmospheric Science courses. So the ultimate weather weenie, let's be honest here, okay? <laughs> this is like fries, cream de la creme. I would like to congratulate John Courier. Please come on down. And happy Cinco de Mayo, which is also John's birthday. Happy birthday, John. Yes. The second award, which John is also receiving. That's why he's still standing here. I am pleased to award the Atmospheric Sciences Honors Award, which is awarded to graduating seniors in the major with a minimum overall GPA of 3.5 in the atmospheric science courses. Would the following students please come on down? John Courier, here we are. Hey John, here you go. Thank you. Here you go. Michael Fecca. You can sit down. Haley Fischetti. And unable to attend, Robert Koenig. Also unable to attend, Thatcher Larrabee. Bobby Saba. <laughs> Brittany Smith. And Patrick Wickstrom. The next award is the Gil Ford Award for Meteorology. This award is named for Gil Ford, who along with the help of his wife, Avis, continuously observed weather in Westbrook, Vermont for 60 years eight years without missing a day. This award is given to a student that has demonstrated exceptional balance of academic performance, leadership, and community service. He's got a personality as big as his brain. I am very pleased to present the Guilford Award to Bobby Saba. And the next award is our Climate Courage Award, given to a student who strongly exemplifies the tenets of intelligent activism on the critical issue of climate change. I am pleased to present this award to the young scientist and earth warrior, Mason De Jesus. And the final award is the Joe DeLeo Award, named for Joe DeLeo, who was one of the founders of Linden's Broadcast Meteorology Program and beloved professor, who was sadly denied tenure during the 1980s. This award was created to support students in good academic standing and strong community involvement. I am pleased to present this award to Haley Fischetti. Bobby Saba. How's this going to fit on your resume? Yeah, yeah. 
Vanessa Simonich. And Patrick Wickstrom. Congratulations, atmospheric science and climate change science students. I would now like to invite my esteemed colleague, Professor Bill Morrison, and also comedian and news anchor from the business department to the podium. Thank you, Jay. I'm pleased and honored to announce the Accounting, Business, and Sport Management Awards. The David Bradley Memorial Award was established by the Business Department to honor the late David Bradley, an exemplar of hard work and dedication. This award is typically given to an outstanding accounting student. This year's recipient is a quiet fellow. He's the living example of the saying, still waters run deep. He has excelled in his studies for all four years currently has a 3.97 GPA. And when asked what he was planning to do after graduation, he said, I think I'll go back home. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna do more than that. Uh, I'm pleased to present the David Bradley Memorial Award to Jesse Monroe. I'm also pleased to present the Ed Mello Memorial Award established by the Business Department in honor of this former colleague who demonstrated integrity and great dedication to his students. This award is typically given to outstanding business students and we have two recipients this year. The first is a very hardworking, dedicated and committed student who has let literally nothing stand in her way of completing her degree. After two human resource internships this year, she's prepared to launch her career at NVRH after graduation. The second is a young man who's shown tremendous leadership and attention to detail during his senior year. And when I asked this student what he was doing after graduation, he said, I think I'll go back into the woods. <laughs> Fair enough, he works for a trail building and construction company. Uh, he has secured a job uh, coming up for this summer. This year, the Ed Mello Memorial Award is presented to Macy Powers and Shane Johnston. And finally, I'm pleased to present the Jamie Owen Sports Award, uh, Sports Management Award. The student receiving this award has developed over his years at NVU from an athletic student to a full-fledged student athlete, meaning that, his, that over time his studies have become more and more important to him. He's one of a handful of students to engage in cross-campus internship opportunities, having spent time at the SHAPE facility on the Johnson campus. All of his professors speak highly of him, and it's my sincere pleasure to award the Jamie Owens Sport Management Award to Ben Cheever. And now I invite Professor Brandon Stroop, co-chair of the Criminal Justice, History, and Global Studies Department to the podium. Thank you, Bill. Um, so it is my honor to uh, present two awards to um, graduating senior in the Criminal and Restorative Justice Program. Um, the first award I'm going to uh, give out is our Outstanding Senior Award. Uh, uh, this is a student who I actually remember uh, her attending our visiting our campus uh, before she decided to attend Linden. Um, 
remember her father's reaction to uh, that meeting. Um, and she's here, and I'm really happy that, that Rebecca decided to uh, attend Linden. Um, it's been an honor to watch her grow as a student and a professional, um, seeing her become a leader in the classroom amongst her peers. Uh, every faculty member who I know has had her has had very positive things to say about her. Um, her internship site supervisors really enjoy her. Um, and as I've said, she has, she has become a real leader um, in the cohort of students who are participating in our Youth Justice Panel internship. So um, I would like to award Rebecca Pearson with the Criminal Justice Outstanding Senior Award. Uh, my next award is for the Criminal Justice Outstanding Senior Thesis Award. Um, that is also going to Rebecca Pearson. Uh, Rebecca's senior thesis is on uh, childhood family dynamics and trauma and its relationship to substance abuse uh, as one grows up. So I uh, would like to award the Criminal Justice Outstanding Senior Thesis Award to Rebecca Pearson. I now invite my colleague and co-chair, Professor Paul Searles, to the podium. Great. Hi. Um, my department had a number of graduating seniors this year who um, were deserving of this award, and uh, we're going to miss them and can't wait to see how they succeed. Um, but the award goes to a young man who um, I just adore and who makes every room that he's in a happier place. The uh, recipient of the History Outstanding Senior Award is Anthony Maurice. Uh, I now invite Professor Michaela Stone of the Education Department to the podium. Thank you, Paul. Um, these past couple of years for, for everyone and our education majors have been incredibly challenging in redefining what we even think about education and what it means to be a teacher. And I feel so fortunate to have worked with so many students who have really risen to that challenge. Um, among them, I'm pleased to present the Education Outstanding Senior Award to Cassidy Olden. Um, she's unable to be here today, but she has absolutely exemplified the level of reflection that is required in a teacher and the level of flexibility that's required in a teacher. And I am so excited for the students who are going to have her as an educator in the future. So Cassidy Olden, was our Education Outstanding Senior. And then we've got two new awards this year. Uh, the first is for a program that is absolutely growing and filling a really important need in the education community in Vermont, and that is our Early Childhood Education Program. Um, we have students who are currently working in the field of early childhood edu education and advancing their careers. One of those is our early childhood education senior, um, Ivy Crow, and I'm not sure if Ivy could be here today. Ivy is here, awesome. Doing just amazing work with students who need it so much. Thank you so much, Ivy. It's been so great to have you. And finally, another new award this year, the um, Graduate Education Award. And that one is going to Jordan Billings. Jordan is not able to be here today. But again, just so proud of the work that our students have been doing. Um, looking forward to seeing their success in the future. I now invite Professor Andrea Luna to the stage.
am happy to be presenting the English Department Outstanding Senior Award to a truly multi-genre writer and reader and thinker. Our winner has written what Pro Professor Castlebury describes as breathtaking stories and outstanding academic papers and, as I can attest, intriguing poems. Not only does the work have an impressive range, it also has a level of maturity and coherence that is rare, and it examines important questions. These important questions are controversial and difficult to discuss, but our winner joins the conversation with humility, grace, and generosity. Faculty find our winner's enthusiasm infectious, Classmates have benefited from her encouragement, careful listening, and shared excitement. Professor Castleberry, who couldn't be here today, tells me that our winner, and this is a quote, is happy to do whatever needs to be done <coughs> to live in Vermont and to write. Professor Castleberry went on to say that she feels so pleased for our state and for our world that our winner today will be here thinking and writing and sharing the realms of her imagination with the state of Vermont. I'm very pleased to award the English Department Outstanding Senior Award to Hannah Young. I now invite Professor Greg Ledoux of the Exercise Science Department to come to the podium. Thank you, Professor Luna. Hey, congratulations. It's awesome. It's awesome any time, but especially what you have been through. And how many parents of these students are here? Listen, I've only spent four years-ish with these students, and I'm exhausted. So congratulations <laughs> to you and what you've done. Your end product is fantastic. Let me know how you did that. My daughter is back there. Hi, Olivia. You know, last time I was up here, hard to believe, I was hilarious. It is on our Instagram page and has grossed over 16 views <laughs> and two likes, <laughs> losing out only to a cat drinking water. How about a round of applause for me? Hold the sign. <laughs> but this is not about me, or so it says on my sheet. So we are going to give two awards to three people, and I think we can probably keep track of that. The first award uh, is our outstanding academic uh, senior with the highest GPA uh, in the department, 3.92, but who's counting? Um, and it's getting harder and harder to decide these awards, and the GPA award has never been closer. Uh, our graduating class continues to amaze me. Uh, two going into clinical doctoral programs, five going into master's degree programs, all others already employed in the field. Um, and so this gets very difficult. Um, and so we were glad that this one was mathematically decided for us. Uh, and this goes to a student who has taught me many things, but nothing more than courage and perseverance. And I will leave it there because I will cry. Uh, very pleased and honored to give this award to Leah Crompton.
The next award, one award, two students, they each get their own piece of paper though. We're doing it right. And that is the Exercise Science Outstanding Senior Award. So this is a combination of GPA contributions within the department and outside of the department to the campus. And this was one that was extremely challenging. Um, you're supposed to say everybody's deserving of it, but actually everyone was deserving of this. Um, again, an incredible graduating class. Um, this first student, let me slow down a second. You know how some people are just amazing immediately and you can tell they're gonna be something special? This student is not one of those students, <laughs> okay? And that's not coming from me. Those are her elementary school teachers who originally cast her in the first play of elementary school that she was so excited about and designed all the sets for, and she was cast as tree one. <laughs> Doing a fantastic job, and I hope you reach out to those uh, elementary school uh, teachers. You have exceeded those high expectations set upon you. Uh, and this student will be attending the University of Vermont uh, doctoral program in physical therapy starting in about 10 days, uh, so a nice break there uh, in between. Uh, and I'm gonna call her first because I'm gonna have her stand here while I announce the other one for two reasons. One, she hates standing in front of people. And two, she's a tree, so she'll be great. <laughs> the student is, of course, Ariana Morin. Told you, loves it. All right, so Dr. Stroop brought this up first, but I'm gonna use a similar story. So this student came to observe a class before they committed to the institution. And it happened to be one of my courses and she brought a friend with her and it was fantastic. So typically if we have a student observe, they put them in my classes, they're more fun and I am a blast. Let's, let's be honest, right? And so a little bit of a, a risk, but we go for it anyway. And so this student came in and within five minutes of an incredible nutrition presentation on the digestive system, her friend fell asleep <laughs> in my class. And I called him out on it. He had a pretty good excuse, military active duty, uh, training that morning about 3 a.m., still came with his friend. So I gave him a pass on the sleeping. Uh, and this student was impressed that we held people to a standard, but also had a sense of humor. I will say that I have learned more from this student um, in terms of kindness and compassion uh, than I could possibly imagine. I do not know what she is like behind the scenes, but to us, she's incredible. Uh, the one and the only Faith Poitier. It is now my great honor to introduce the chair of the Mathematics and Computer Science Department and the best hockey player in the entire Mathematics Department, of course, <laughs> Professor Dan Daly. He does that to me every year. Katie, are you out there? Next year you're giving those awards, okay? I can't, I can't do this every year, follow this up. I can't do this. Thank you, Professor Ledoux. Um, I am now pleased to present the Albert J. Willette Memorial Award for the Mathematics Department. Um, this award is named in honor of longtime Linden State College math professor, Al Willette, who grew up in the, in the St. Johnsbury area and then after college returned and taught math here from 1964 to 1997. So for those of you who were mathematically challenged like Professor Dahl, that's 33 years. Um, okay, guidelines for this award include uh, 
at least a 3.5 GPA in courses in the math department, uh, significant service to the department, <clears throat> and plans to continue a career in a math-related field. Uh, it is with great pride that I present this year's award to Cameron Santos, who was unable to attend, but let's please give her a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations, Cameron. I now invite my colleague, Professor Bradley Beth, to the podium. Hi there. Um, I'm presenting one award for excellence in computer information systems, which unsurprisingly is for excellence in computer information systems. Um, this award is presented to Xavier Hastings, who I believe couldn't be here today. Um, but uh, just briefly, Xavier exemplifies that still waters run deep. He's a very a uh, quiet person, but um, his attention to detail and his initiative that he took in uh, undertaking projects was unparalleled. Okay, um, I now invite Professor Sean Dahl of the Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism Department. Hello, how's everybody doing? I'm fine, thank you so much for asking. I appreciate your concern, I really do. Um, I'm, my name is Sean Dahl. Uh, I'm here to actually present the award for, I gotta read it actually, because uh, I couldn't remember, because not only am I bad at math, I have a horrible memory. Um, Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism Excellence Honor Award. Obviously, that goes to somebody from the Outdoor Education, Leadership, and Tourism Department uh, who is excellent, <laughs> I guess. Uh, we have actually a pretty stringent criteria, three, three criteria for this award. One is academic excellence. One is, another one is leadership. And the third one is this person needs to be able to entertain James, Ben, and I on a regular basis. Uh, this particular student, the one who was uh, winning this award this year, or going to get this award, I don't know if she won it necessarily, um, was very entertaining for me this year because she used, it was always fun to watch her walk towards the mountain wreck, the mountain wreck? <laughs> OELT uh, vans, uh, skis in one hand, coffee in the other, and was still able to fall asleep pretty quickly once she got in the, in the car. So that was entertaining, and also she was always there to go, Sean, every time I said something inappropriate. Uh, so every class that she ever attended uh, in all of my classes, actually. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand this award off to the one and only, and thank God for that, <laughs> Annabelle Hip. <laughs> it is my honor, not only to hand out this award, but, in, but to invite Professor Brian Warwick, did I get that right so far? Chair and Grand High Exalted Mystic Ruler of the Music and Performing Arts Department. He also happens to be my best friend behind a couple of hundred other people and a few of those I haven't met yet. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Sean Dahl, Professor Sean Dahl. Uh, uh, my colleagues, Joe and Tim, are extremely proud of the MBI class of 2020. They have overcome some of the most challenging times in the history of this university. And their drive to learn, create, and support one another is second to none. 
For this, the music, uh, for this, the music and performing arts department expresses its sincerest gratitude. But today we are honoring two students. These students have gone above and beyond in support of their fellow, classmate, uh, fellow classmates and the faculty. Let me explain, okay? Sometimes, and this is very rare, Dr. Mills, Nolan, super rare, super rare. Sometimes us professors, right, we try to explain a concept. And sometimes, no matter how fantastically us professors explain something, the students don't understand it. That's when I get to say one of the handiest phrases in my vocabulary. Have you seen the tutor yet? It is my pleasure to present the Beth Norris Music and Performing Arts Distinguished Senior Award to Autumn Chamberlain and Jacob Before. I now invite Professor Alan Giese, Chair of the Natural Science Department, to the podium. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everyone. I don't think I'm going to be as entertaining as them, so just... In between the highs, you have to have the chance to recover, so that's what I plan to give you. Um, I'm here to present the Outstanding Senior Award for the Natural Sciences. Uh, it's my honor. Um, this student has been incredible uh, since other people have tossed out numbers. Uh, 3.98 GPA across all years, all classes, all disciplines, all everything, which is amazing. Um, this person is eager to learn, curious, smart, obviously, um, but also humble and, and an amazing student to work with for all those reasons. Uh, when higher education is at its best, uh, we open minds, we try to get people to think about new ideas um, and expand their thinking. Um, and one of the things that's been so refreshing about working with this student is that um, he comes to class with an open mind uh, and, and all ready to go. Um, it's just been a pleasure. Um, I think I could say, speak for all the, all the faculty that have worked with him, that um, we learn as much by being challenged by his ability to learn. Um, he's tough to keep up with at times. Uh, and we've learned from him as much as we hope that we have taught him. So um, with that, I'd like to present the Outstanding Award um, for Natural Sciences to Will Miller-Brown. <laughs> was done. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Pat Schein, co-chair of the Department of Psychology, to the podium. Thanks, Alan. The Psychology Department Outstanding Scholar Award recognizes a, a psychology and human services senior who has a consistent record of excellence in scholarship, personal growth, and professional development. The award acknowledges an exemplary, speak Pat, exemplary level of commitment and sophistication in oral expression, unlike me, written work, and interpersonal interactions. This student has demonstrated intelligence, integrity, and the ability to make a significant contribution to the field of psychology and human services. She has maintained an almost perfect GPA while working for the past two years toggling between full-time and part-time, depending on her course schedule, at a local human services agency. She'll be completing her internship this summer, engaging in equine-assisted therapy. 
The department is most delighted to present this award to Sabrina Thompson. I now invite Professor Barkley Tucker of the Visual Arts Department to the podium. I just realized I'm the last one up here. And so uh, I'm going to extend this as long as I can just to <laughs> cause you a great deal of pain. And thank you, Professor Shine, also. It's my pleasure to announce the recipients of the Visual Arts Awards of Distinction for the Animation and Gra Illustration and Graphic Design programs. The Visual Arts faculty have unanimously selected two students to receive an award of distinction for this year. The first is an animation illustration student that is constantly working on and successfully balancing multiple, pro pers multiple personal, class, and professional projects. They are passionate about their work and this school. They were an active participant in, par in protesting the failed closure of our school just two years ago. In addition to their exemplary abilities as an illustrator, they have consistently demonstrated a high level of professional skills and resilience. We can rely on them to get the job done and to do an incredible job as well. They are an illustrator and an, uh, an artist in every sense of the word, and this is only a joke that they'll get. I will defer to them as the master. The Visual Arts Award of Distinction for a BFA in Animation Illustration is awarded to a Amanda Adams. Yeah. What, you got it? <laughs> Oops. It fell off, I'm sorry. Congratulations, Amanda. The second Visual Arts Award of Distinction for BA in Graphic Design goes to a student that has a thirst for learning and is always striving to improve. Although they are quiet, and I emphasize quiet, they, are consistently they consistently demonstrate the creative and professional qualities that we hope to develop in our students. They are hardworking and diligent they pay attention to the clients and consistently do what they need to get done without sacrificing the quality of design. The Visual Arts Award of Distinction for a BA in Graphic Design is being awarded to Terrence Strait. I don't, I don't think TJ's here, so, nope. All right, well, congratulations, TJ. I will now, um, this. This concludes the awards, and I now invite Provost Nolan Atkins back to the podium. Thank you, Barkley, and congratulations to all of our award recipients and to the class of 2022 who are so close to graduating. We have one final treat for you this afternoon. Music and performing arts students Jared Boren Cody Cochran, Charlotte Morris, and Ethan Williams have composed a special medley for your musical entertainment before we close our ceremony. While, yeah, go ahead and give them a round of applause. So while our musicians are queuing up, I have a request for the class of 2022. After the ceremony, photographer Herb Swanson will take a group photo of all of the graduates in the standard gymnasium in your regalia. This photograph will be printed in the commencement pro program, so your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Please gather in the standard gym after this event for the photograph, as well as the post-ceremonial reception. Family members are welcome to attend the reception and they are welcome to take photos as well. 
Jared, are you ready? Oh, 
Thank you for sharing your musical talents with us today. Let's give them another round of applause. This now concludes our robing ceremony. Congratulations again to the class of 2022. As others have already said, you've made it through some very difficult times, so congratulations. I would ask that our graduates and guests please wait at your places while Professor Werdenschlag leads the platform party and faculty in recessional. As mentioned, everyone is welcome to join us in the standard gym for refreshments in the class of 2022 group photograph. Thank you all for coming. Autumn Chamberlain, would you please play the recessional one last time?